was the next great idea. Even today, with unlimited resources at our fingertips through internet and social networking, there are a lot of reasons why people don't want to try their ideas. They either don't know where to start, they don't have the money they think they need, or they don't have someone to help. But just remember, if you want to try your ideas, there's always a way to make it happen. Ever since I was little, I've been doing crafts, making gadgets, and coming up with all sorts of little ideas. And I've, I've been good at making money, but I've also been good at saving it too. So, um, ever since, um, uh, when I was five years old, I had set up my first lemonade stand one summer during a neighborhood garage sale, and I did pretty well. The next year, I set up again and added homemade cookies. Even though I had two products to sell, I didn't make as much money as the previous year because another kid in the neighborhood set up a juice and candy stand, and his house was in a better location. I was only six, but I learned a lot that year about competition and marketing. After I turned eight, I tried a hot chocolate stand right before Christmas. That same year, I started a neighborhood recycling business. If you're ever looking to make some extra money, recycling is a great business to do. Even if you only collect your own family's recycling, it's basically free money. You probably don't have to buy the drinks at the store, your parents probably won't charge you for the gas to drive to the recycling center. And other than maybe sorting out the bottles and cans and rinsing out some of the leftover liquid, it's basically free money and it helps the environment. I still recycle today. Then, at nine years old, I came up with pencil books. It's not like I had some long-term master plan. In fact, I wasn't thinking about being an entrepreneur at all, which proves that if you keep your eyes open, you can be surprised at what can happen. Here's how it all began. My mom was painting some wooden door stoppers to sell at a craft fair, and I had a brilliant idea. Or at least I thought it was. I thought that if I helped her paint the door stoppers, that she would help me, uh, that she would split the money with me, and that I would be able to get some of it. Now, I thought that, that was a great idea, but surprisingly, my mom said no. She said I had to come up with my own idea. So after drawing some designs on paper, thinking of things that kids would like, I finally came up with the idea of pencil bugs. I knew that a pencil topper wasn't that original, so I tried to think of ways to make it as creative and unique as possible. With $10 of my own money, I bought the supplies I needed to make 24 of them for the craft fair. We shipped them to my grandma, who's in North Dakota, and all of the pencil bugs sold out very, very fast. Grandma sent me the proceeds, and I didn't give it too much thought after that. During Christmas vacation, I made a few more to show kids at school. One thing led to another, and before long, I was taking orders every day, going home and making them, and collecting the money the next day. After selling pencil books at my school for a few weeks, other kids were inspired to try their own ideas. Some people even wanted to help me make the pencil books, so I thought that was pretty cool. Although I turned them down since they're pretty hard to make with all of the small parts that you have to use. Plus, I was pretty particular about quality. One day, I got an offer that really surprised me. I'm going to stop here for a minute. By a show of hands, how many of you think that $100 is a lot of money? How many of you? Yeah. I agree, $100 is a lot of money. Well, I hadn't made that much money at that point in my business, but a classmate in fourth grade came up to me on the playground, reached into his pocket, and pulled out two $50 bills. I could not believe it. He actually offered to buy my business. I had to think about it for a minute, and then I turned him down. I knew if I kept at it, I'd make way more than his $100 and I ended up doing so, so I'm glad I made that decision. Shortly after that, my mom helped me get a business license and sales tax ID. I designed my business cards and logo, and my mom helped me set up a website and a PayPal account for orders. We created documents for accounting and other things to keep them organized. Since we're talking about accounting and money, you're probably wondering what I do with it. I use whatever is necessary for business expenses. I donate a portion of my proceeds to Greedy Children's Hospital in San Diego, and the rest is invested in um, stocks, mutual funds, and saved in my college fund. I haven't spent any of my business money on
personal things. That's what I use my recycling money for. Although I hate to spend that either, because I know what it takes to earn it. Even if I do find something I want to buy, I think long and hard about whether I really need it or just want it. Usually I decide I can save the money. Donating has always been important to me. Every quarter I buy toys, games, books, and other activities for kids at Rady. In addition to that, I also have an annual fundraiser. Last year, I raised over $5,000 to buy 1,800 teddy bears for kids at Grady. We tied a donation tag on every single one of the bears. People from all... Um, donation tags. People from all over the world sent in donations. It was pretty cool. We had to get a big truck to deliver them. I started in July this year and hope to top that. Once I had the business set up legally, I needed more people to know about me and pencil bugs, but I didn't have any money to spend on advertising. By the way, I still don't spend any of the money on advertising because I learned you can do a lot without a marketing budget. You just have to be a little bit more creative. We contacted the local Albertsons and Walmarts in Temecula and Marietta, and we asked if we could sell outside their store on weekends. It was really good that I already had a business license because that was one of their requirements. When they found that I was donating to help kids, they were really supportive. For the first two years, we set up sidewalk sales outside of stores on many, many weekends. It was one of the cheapest ways to advertise, market, and sell products. But it wasn't always fun or easy. After all, I was only 10 and there were a lot of times I wish I could have been playing than standing outside trying to sell people products. By the way, my mom and dad have always given me the option to stop my business altogether. There were many times we would sit down and write a list of pros and cons and see if it was um, my decision to uh, keep the business or uh, stop at that point. I would think about it for a while and I always decided to continue. If you give up, you'll never know what might have happened. Now, looking back, I'm so glad my parents have helped me and given me support, even if they had to nudge me a little to get going. We contacted the local newspapers and radio stations. Having articles about pencil bugs was a great form of free advertising. I also started giving presentations at schools, libraries, and community organizations. By the third year, I didn't have to do sidewalk sales anymore. I was so excited about that. I was getting lots of media attention, including some big national coverage, so people were ordering directly from my website. When I was 11, I was the youngest person to win the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award. I was pretty cool, but because the contest was for 16 and older, but I entered anyway. I explained that there were a lot of kids younger than 16 who had businesses and were doing great things. The judges were so impressed that they created a new category for under 16, and I was the first to win. So sometimes it pays to break the rules. Because of that recognition, Forbes found me and named me on their first top 10 list of role models, 18 and under. I was only 12 at the time, but I had heard of Forbes, but I didn't really realize what a big business magazine it was. It was a real honor that they considered me a role model. Plus, I was on the, I was on the list with celebrities like Miley Cyrus, Nick Jonas, Olympic gold medalist Sean Johnson. Can you say this again? Um, yeah, Miley Cyrus, Nick Jonas, Olympic gold medalist Sean Johnson, and many others. Balancing school and business isn't as hard as some people may think. My mom helps me a lot with the day-to-day -day responsibilities while I'm at school. She taught me how to do all of the accounting and banking and making PayPal transactions. I can also make changes to my website and do all other parts of my business if necessary. I've always gone to a regular school, but my parents don't want me to get overloaded. School comes first. I have homework just like you guys, and then I do the business work. But I still have time for playing just like any other kid. That's one of the most important things to remember if you're thinking of starting a business or doing anything extracurricular. Remember to be a kid first. Most businesses have more than one product. It was about four months after I first created pencil bugs that I added laminated bookmarks and 
last year, I designed greeting cards with pencil book characters for all occasions. I also have a cafe press store online where people can order t-shirts, mouse pads, coffee mugs, and even things for your pet with my logo or characters on them. There's all sorts of really cool things. <laughs> Since I started, I've received a lot of emails from people asking my advice. About two years ago, I started sharing my advice and tips on Twitter and also created a blog. One day, someone suggested that I write a book. I had a lot of stories already written, but when I decided to put a book together, it wasn't like I had to sit down and start writing from scratch. Even so, it took almost two years from having the idea to getting the published book in my hands. The book is called bitten by the business bug. And it's best described by the subtitle, which is Common Sense Tips for Business and Life from a Teen Entrepreneur. The quality of self-publishing is getting better and better, and more and more people are writing and publishing books. If you decide to do that, make sure you do everything possible to make it as professional as possible. Writing and getting a book printed is actually the easy part. Marketing, promoting, and selling it is the hard part and can be a full-time job. Just ask my mom. She spends most of her day working on that. Balancing the daily business responsibilities is fairly easy. What becomes a challenge and a little bit more effort is traveling and speaking at events. I have to plan ahead, get homework done, and take makeup tests. But public speaking, traveling, and meeting people is probably the best part about having a business. In fact, since my book came out, I've been able to do a lot more of that. In August, I spoke at a conference in USD in San Diego and also at the California Homeschool Network Expo. Those in the California Homeschool Network Expo. Those were really fun, but on September 18th, I was a guest speaker at a TEDx conference in Redmond, Washington at the Microsoft headquarters. That was so awesome because it was organized by kids, for kids, with the theme, Power to the Students. I had a lot of great opportunities and learned many things since starting my business. I wanted to share some of the most important ones with you now. You can always read more in my book if you're interested. So here are some things to remember. Number one, try your ideas, because doing nothing guarantees nothing. You might be surprised at what you can accomplish. Number two, start out small. You don't need a lot of money to try your ideas. In fact, sometimes the simplest ideas can be the best ones. And the last one, don't limit your opportunities and be too focused on one idea. Make sure that you're open to anything that may come your way. People create products and services for many reasons. I initially made pencil bugs for a fun product to sell at a craft fair. Other people create products out of a necessity or to solve a problem. I recently met another young entrepreneur with an amazing product. Her name is Haley Scott. We met online because we were both featured in a new book called Starting a business, have fun, and make money. I've met a lot of kids with businesses since I've started mine. The ironic thing about meeting Haley is that I received my copy of this book on the same day I got the invitation to speak at your school. I wanted to share her story with you today. Haley is 11 years old and is hearing impaired. She created a product called Haley's Cherished Charms. Instead of trying to hide her hearing aids, she decided to show them off by creating clever charms to fit over them. Haley has many different styles, and there's everything from fun kids' designs to holiday charms, and there are even some with expensive crystals. If you want to learn more about what she's doing, you can always go to her website at haleyscherishcharms.com. It's right there. You just never know where an idea might come from. 
If you keep your eyes open, the best opportunity might pop up right beside you. Take advantage of those opportunities and see what you can do. You might just surprise yourself. Thank you guys for your time. I can answer any questions if you want afterwards. But if anybody wants more information...